What's up guys, my name is Matthew, and today we are starting a reading blog where we only read books with LGBTQ themes. Alright, so I picked three books that I have been wanting to read for a very long time. The first one is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This was actually the 2017 book of the year for Book of the Month. And you know, I'm just now getting into it to the end of um, 2021, but we're finally getting to it. Then I'm planning on reading Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I've heard only amazing things about this one. Everybody's talked about it. I'm really late to the party. And I think a sequel came out like two weeks ago and everyone's already raving about that. So I decided to pick this book up and get started with this one. I'm not really sure what it's about. I know it's a young adult, male, male, contemporary. I don't really know if it's considered a romance, but it's about two young, uh, two young boys, Dante and Ari, and they become friends and deal with kind of growing up and understanding their friendship and maybe it's gonna turn into something more, but I will update you when I get to this book, but that's about all I know so far for this one. And then finally, I know I've been saying for a long time that I was gonna start reading more female, female romances. So I picked up Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi, probably butcher that. And this one is a female, female romance and we're gonna finally get some female, female romances under my belt and I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, so as I said, this book is a female, female romance, pretty sure it's a young adult. And it's, I think it's a hate to love from what I've got so far. Um, I think one of the girls asked the girl out on a date and they thought they were making fun of them, but they weren't. And they start working together on a class project. And that's about all I know. <laughs> when I get to this book, I will update you more. As you can see, I really don't know what these books are about. And honestly, that's kind of the best way to get, jump into books, I think. I have already started The Heart's Invisible Furies. I'm on page 175. And I love it. I mean, everyone says this book was amazing. There's a reason it won all the awards. We're following a guy named Cyril Avery from his point of conception all the way until his, I'm assuming, death. So this book spans from 1945 Ireland all the way up to 2015, where he, I think he ends up in New York. And he is a gay man, and we're just following his life and all of his tribulations and all the things he's had to go through. So far, I've gotten to see when he was in his mother's womb and all the shit that his mother had to go through because she had a baby out of wedlock and how the Catholic Church is so misogynist and how she was kicked out of her little Irish village because she got pregnant. And I found it was so interesting how they treated her like a pariah and a piece of shit. And the priest was like, you need to say who the, God, who the father is so that he can atone for his sins and move on. But like, she's like the pregnant whore. And like, you know, we can't, it's the woman's fault that she got pregnant, not the man who knocked her up. It was really frustrating to read, honestly, the first part of this book and just really showing how the priests kind of ran Ireland in the 1940s, just how shitty they were and how just like not good people they were. And I mean, I was also raised Catholic, so I wasn't raised Catholic in the 1940s. That sounds like a terrible time, but I'm, there's a lot of the things in this book that have hit, hit close to home so far and I'm really enjoying it. Right now I'm in the book, he's a teenager and they made a really good point about like priests and how homosexuality can get you in prison if you do like perform any homosexual acts. And then he was like, except well, unless you're a priest, then you get a freebie pass and you can do whatever you want. And it's just like kind of how priests kind of ran this country and just kind of got away with so much shit during this time and how not all of them, I mean, obviously this is generally, there were some probably some really nice, good, decent priests during this time, but the ones we've met so far are just like awful people. And well, I want to talk about other parts of this book, but I'm scared it's a spoiler and I'm not gonna go into much details of what's happening, but I'm loving it. I'm loving the characters. There's actually two characters. I'm not gonna tell you who they are because it might be considered a spoiler, but they remind me so much of Moira Rose and David Rose, not David Rose, Johnny Rose, Moira Rose and Johnny Rose, the parents, because they're so out of touch with reality and like so hilariously, like one of them is an author and she hates when people read her books because she thinks being famous is just so tacky and just the things that come out of her mouth, I really can literally see and hear Moira Rose saying it because it's just so absurd and I'm obsessed with those characters. So that happened in the first 175 pages, I'm not gonna tell you who they are, but when, if you get there, you'll know who I'm talking about and it's so funny because they're so shitty. And Cyril's just having to 
grow up, he's meeting guys, he's kind of understanding like, why am I so attracted to like guys and like kind of figuring out what homosexuality is and there's just so much going on and it's just, I understand and I feel like this book is going to break me, like literally break me and I'm so excited for it, I'm here for it, like let's go. Um, I will update you as I go forward, but I'm gonna be very, I'm gonna try to be very vague and just keep, give it general so that if you wanna read this book, you don't get spoiled and I can just kind of give you an idea of what to expect. But so far, we're in Ireland. It's the 1940s to 1960-ish, 70-ish area and he's growing up coming to terms with his sexuality, dealing with the Catholic Church, and just kind of really, you know, self-discovery and learning about himself, and I am loving it. Also, Taylor Swift's re-recording of Red comes out in four days, so I'm kind of hoping this book breaks me so that I can listen to Taylor Swift music and be sad. So I'm about halfway through. I'm on 1973, Keeping the Devil at Bay, which is about halfway through the book. And we are at the part of Cyril's life when he's about in his 20s. Um, there's been some pretty graphic scenes so far. He goes to the doctor to try to fix his homosexuality. And there's kind of a gruesome like, like scene where the doctor tries to perform some sort of weird surgery to make him non-gay. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was kind of fucked up. He also has like a girlfriend that he hates and who is probably one of the most annoying human beings I've ever read about. I really dislike her. But right now we're just kind of reading about him, you know, having sex, like closeted, you know, discreet sex with random men. There's a, there's a lot of gay shit happening and how Ireland's dealing with it. People are getting caught in sexual activities, really important people, and they're losing their jobs and Cyril, Cyril is just trying to lay low, not get arrested. And the last part ends on a very shocking note. And now we're moving into 1973 and I'm enjoying it, but it is very sad and kind of fucked up. I just finished part one. I'm on page like 300 and that was fucking heartbreaking. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't talk about it because it's a spoiler, but it was pretty sad and it kind of ended on a cliff hanger and I'm pretty sure I know what the cliffhanger is but I'm not gonna say what I think it is because it would definitely be a spoiler but Cyril is definitely a flawed character and he, ugh, so sad it was so sad I can't believe I still have half of the book left like the first half of the book was so just good and he's only about like 30 I guess and I'm so sad like that was but Let's see what happens. Let's see where his life takes him now. <laughs> Fuck. You guys, I just finished part three or part two. And that was some of the saddest shit I've ever read. Like, I'm not okay. Like this, is, this was very, very, very sad. And I still have like 150 pages left to go. And it, like, like it was really sad. And then it got even sadder and uh, this, <laughs> this is not, huh? why did I do this to myself? Why, why? But it's like really good. I haven't felt this way about a book since like The Nightingale or The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This book is beautiful. I felt every emotion. I'm broken and I still have 150 pages to go and too much, too much. I just finished. <laughs> and I just finished crying. Um, I went through the whole book, the entire book. The very last page, I broke down and started crying. <laughs> this book was phenomenal. It was beautiful. It was way more than I was expecting. And honestly, this book was literally just about a man from Ireland and his life, his highs, his lows, his pains, his happiness. And like, fuck, this book was amazing. Like literally, if you haven't read it, pick it up. I can't believe I waited this long. I want to talk about so much. 
I'm gonna go on YouTube right now and just watch other people talk about this book because, wow. Like, what the fuck? That was such a good book. That's good. This is gonna be my favorite book that I read this year. I know it is. And it got me. I can list on my hands the amount of books that made me cry. And this one did it. Oh my God, that was so good. Like, that was so good. All right, so it's been a day since I finished the Hearts of Invisible Furies, and I figured I should give a little bit better of a wrap up, considering this was my favorite book of the year so far, and my wrap up just consisted of me yelling fuck. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this book. Um, given having like 24 hours to think about it, like wow, this was an amazing book. There's something about a book that follows someone's whole life that just gets me. The only books that have made me cry are books that follow people's whole life. So it was this book, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and The Nightingale are the only books that have ever made me cry, and they all involve following someone's life. They're all different. One's dealing with somebody in, you know, the Holocaust in World War II, one's dealing with a famous Hollywood actress, and one's dealing with a average gay Italian guy. And, you know, they're very different, but they all, there's just something about, like, seeing what causes a person to act a certain way and how when you have the full picture of someone's life it makes sense as to why people act a certain way and it just like makes you more compassionate <laughs> you know once you have someone's whole story i feel like it's really hard not to be compassionate towards them and why they do the things they do even if they do things that you don't agree with or something you think you wouldn't do but once you put yourself into their shoes and see the full picture it's hard not to you know feel for them, and Cyril was just such an amazing character. What I think my favorite part of this book was, even more so than the other two books that made me cry, is that this book, the side characters were, like, I loved them. They were so fleshed out. I loved how you would see them at certain parts of his life, like his childhood or his teenage years or his 20s, and then somehow they would circle back in to when he's like a grown-ass adult, and how it's this book, everything came full circle. Also, the book started where it ended, and it was just like, just like this beautiful circle that was completed, and another thing I liked about this book is how the reader knew things that Cyril didn't know, and it was so frustrating. You're like, ah, just, it's right in front of you. Why are you not seeing it? And once the revelations came, like where Cyril figured something out that the reader always knew, it's just like this like awesome moment where you're like, oh, finally. I'm um, trying not to give any spoilers away, obviously, but, this book was life-changing. I loved it. I will definitely reread this again in the future. Please give this a try if you're into historical fiction, literary fiction, because this book was just so good. I feel like a different person that I've read this book. I literally feel like a different person now that I've read this book. But I am excited to jump into Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe. Everyone has tell, been telling me I need to read this. It's some people's favorite book of all time. So I'm really excited. It is a young adult, so I'm a little nervous, but look at all these little medals. I mean, it has to be good, right? You have four medals on your cover. You gotta be good, right? But I will update you guys once I'm a little bit into it. I've started it. I don't really have much thoughts so far. I mean, it's kind of, nothing's really happened, but I will update you once I've read some more. All right, guys, it's the next day and I'm on page 177 of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. And I'm a little upset because I'm not loving it. I, I'm I, I don't really understand what's <laughs> so great about this book and I feel bad because I know this is some people's like favorite book of all time and thinks it's beautiful and I, if I didn't know this book was so famous I probably would DNF it. I, I don't, I'm not really relating to the characters. I, I honestly think the characters feel like they're eight and they're supposed to be 15 but the way they're coming across they seem so young or maybe I'm just really out of touch with what a 15 year old thinks about but he just like we're coming from Ari's perspective and he just comes across like an eight-year-old to me not a 15-year-old I I do like I do relate in some aspects especially the part where he's talking about just how he doesn't get along with most guys you know kind of trying to figure out his identity but honestly I don't like I maybe it's because I just came back from reading one of the best books of all time and this is like hard to follow up because, you know, I have the other book on such a high pedestal, but I'm going to finish it because I think I owe it to this book and everyone on booktube seems to love it. I mean, there's three words on each page, so it's super easy to read, but I'm just not connecting. I don't know. It's not working for me. And I feel bad because I know some people 
love this book, but I will update. And hopefully the second half of the book is just breaks my heart. It's beautiful, but I will update you as I continue. I'm actually watching the uh, video that Gabby Reed just put out and she's reading the sequel to Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe. And she's talking about how she read the first book three times. I'm like, why? Like, I'm scared I'm reading the wrong book. This book is just about little kids who become friends. Am I heartless? Am I broken? Probably. I'm reading chapter after chapter after chapter of them writing letters to each other about nothing. I'm just confused. They're not, they're not even meant talking about anything of substance. And it's not relatable. I'm thinking that people who love this book must have read it when they were 15. Because I am just not connecting at all to these characters. And I feel bad because everyone loves these characters, but just like, ugh, they seem really immature. Like, was I like this when I was 15? Maybe so. I, I don't know. I just, I don't care. I'm ready for this to be over. He's 16 years old and he just asked Dante, Ari just asked Dante, is it normal to masturbate? 16! Like, 16, my friends were like having sex. I wasn't having sex, but like, what? I think this book's just showing me that I was fucked up. <laughs> I did not have a normal teenage experience, I guess. Cause these 16 year olds act like, not 16, not any 16 year olds I know. And like, I was a nerdy honors AP student who had like a 4.0 GPA, but I just think I was in a different place at 16 than the boys in this book. And hey, we all grow up at different levels, but like, I think that's why I'm struggling so much with this book. It's like, I, I don't think 16 year olds think like this. I think I had these thoughts that they're having when I was like 11. Like what? Okay, enough, enough. I'm being mean, I guess, but I just, I'm not connecting and I think there's an age disconnect. All right guys, it's the next day and I finally finished. And I hate to say that, yeah, I still don't like it. I'm sorry. I know this is like God tier for so many people, but I did not enjoy this book at all. I did not connect with the characters. I thought the characters were not portrayed as actual 15, 16 year olds. They seemed a lot younger. Nothing really happened in the book. I know a lot better young adult male male romances than this one. I think for some people, if this is one of your favorite books, I'm gonna assume that you might have read this when you were younger, so it like has a place in your heart because, you know, it was one of the first like queer books you read. I don't know. Tell me in the comments. I'm really interested in like when certain people pick this up because I just did not enjoy it. I just thought it was mediocre at best. I, I don't know who gave all these awards because they wouldn't have come for me. I finished it because I wanted to say that I read it. I will not be reading the sequel. Yeah, I think I gave it two stars. This This is probably the biggest disappointment of the year for me. And you know, it might be because I just read one of the most beautiful books I've ever read in my entire life right before this. So that, coming from that status to just this like light young adult book where nothing really happens and it's just cutesy cutesy kind of. I didn't even think it was cute. I really, there was moments, especially at the end, I, I felt like, oh, that's kind of cute, but it flopped for me. It just, it, it, I, I didn't feel, it didn't give me any feels. I just. I'm sorry, I know, this. I, I'm definitely in the minority with this one. It happens. Last year, that book, um, The Secret Life of Addie LaRue, I could not stand it, and it was people's favorite book of the year. So there's always one book that I just don't connect with the way other people connect, and this year, I think it's this one. But I'm glad I finally, you know, checked it off my list because it's been on my TBR forever. But we're gonna move on to Tell Me How You Really Feel. I'm really freaking nervous because this is also young adults and I don't know if I can do another young adult because these are boring me, but we're gonna go into it with optimism and I'm hoping this gives me all the cutesy cutesy feels and I will report back. Right now I'm about to go get ready and I'm about to go get some drinks with some friends, possibly dinner, going out, we'll see. I'll try to get some footage. Yeah, you 
editing that video and I was like wow this channel should be called reading and drinking with Matthew that went classy to trashy very fast but it was a lot of fun um, I am 30 pages into this book and I am already liking it so much more than the last book I read these girls actually feel like high school students their thoughts their ambitions uh, this is what a young adult high school book is supposed to read like in my opinion. We have two girls. One is Rachel, who's kind of this angry, doesn't trust people, film student who comes from a poor financial background, who's on scholarship at this high school, and she's trying really hard to get a scholarship to NYU. Then we have Sana, Sana, I don't know how to pronounce her name, it's S-A-N-A, -A, and she um, is a cheerleader, and she got into Princeton, she wants to become a doctor. I also love in every young adult book or every movie, Netflix movie, young adult, all the kids are always going to Ivy Leagues or NYU. And, you know, that's just not realistic. Not everybody's going to those big old fancy schools, and that's okay. But anyway, I'm really enjoying it. I'm only 30 pages in, but I'm already kind of loving the hate to love. Rachel is so angry at Santa, and Santa has done nothing wrong to her. She think, Rachel thinks that Santa is bullying her or just making fun of her and it's just not the case. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm actually excited about this young adult book. So fingers crossed that it keeps on keeping me entertained. I also got this um, candle from Anthropology, and it's called Plaid and Pinecone, I think. And I am obsessed with it. I think it's just so pretty. And then... It has like a masculine scent, but then with a hint of Christmas, if that makes sense. But I love it. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Wait, I forgot to talk about Red. I am obsessed and I keep listening to it on repeat. That all too well, that short film, fucking beautiful. I'm obsessed. I think my favorite songs from The Vault are Message in a Bottle and the very first night. I really want to like I Bet You Think of Me still. I think that's what it's called, but I just don't. That's too like country for me. But I am loving it. I'm honestly concerned for me for when the 1989 Taylor's version comes out because that's my favorite album. And I cannot wait to see all the songs in the vault because that's just the vibe. I like the, like the 1989 vibe is what I like the best. But yes, this is I keep listening to all these songs on repeat and I am very, very impressed. So I'm on page 80 and I'm really liking it. 
Uh, the author's doing a good job of showing each of the girls like story, like why they are the way they are. And I think that's important, especially in a young adult, because I feel like in young adults, sometimes it's just, you know, straight to the love and you don't really know the characters. It's just like, oh, boy meets girl, girl meets girl, boy meets boy. But this is like giving a little bit of history of their background and like, they're both very similar. They're both type A perfectionists. Just one wants to do medicine and one wants to be like a film student. But I'm really enjoying it and I'm hoping I can knock this out quick, but I've been reading different books in between this. I'm reading this book right now about a school shooter and I'm obsessed, but I'll talk about that in my wrap up. So it's taking me a little bit longer to get through this book than I would like, but I am enjoying it a lot more than the last book I read. I just finished Tell Me How You Really Feel and it was so freaking cute. And I'm so relieved because I was so nervous about this being a, a young adult book. My first female, female romance. I didn't know what to expect. And these characters were so cute. This is kind of what I picture when I think of high school. All the vibes, all the angst, all the not knowing where your future's going. What do you want to do with your life? And I really, really enjoyed this book. I don't want to give any spoilers away. But I just, I really like that. I feel like this book did a great job of exploring what a junior or senior in high school is going through. Obviously, every human being has a different experience in high school. But... I related a lot to this because I remember when I was in high school, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know who I was, what I was doing. And I thought this book did a good job of capturing that. And I just really liked the girls in this book. And yeah, I definitely recommend it. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. For a young adult book, four stars is pretty high because it's really hard for me to get into young adult books. But I'm so relieved about this book that I loved it. It lived up to the hype. So I think that's gonna conclude this vlog. I've been making this for a while and one, The Hearts Invisible Furies. I know you're overhearing me talk about this, but this book was amazing. Like, ugh, so, 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 so good. Please read this if you haven't already. I know I'm late to the game, so for most of you have probably already read it. I hate to say that Aristotle and Dante wasn't for me, did not relate, but you know, not every book you're gonna relate to. And tell me how you really feel. It's so fucking cute if you're looking for a female, female romance that's just really really well done pick this one up i'm definitely gonna read more from amina may safi i know i'm pronouncing her name wrong sorry but yeah i really like this book but thank you guys for watching this um i hope you enjoy this and let me know if you've read these books or if you have any other recommendations for me Stay. Stay.